reformation move of God. We have breached its core. We are drawing from its creative center. We will stay the course. We will suffer well. And we will press to the finish. Reach around and touch three people. Say, let's finish this. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. Come on, get out of your seat. Let's finish this. The plans and purposes of God are so great among us now. And anybody that is really walking, anybody that is really walking in God's plans and God's purposes can feel the weightiness and the heaviness of his mandate in and upon our lives. Um, the plans and purposes are something that God has individually set in every one of your lives. And you must now pursue that with everything that you have. I love this being the year of recovery. We shall pursue and we shall recover all. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting everything back. I'm getting everything back. Hmm? Yeah, we shall recover all. Um, and, you know, although we don't like to really maybe confess it or talk about anything, we've had some losses. We've had some damages and we've had some things that we've gone through over the course of this journey. But the promise of God is that we shall recover all. And right now we're in a season of recovery. We're in a time of recovery. You ought to feel like a magnet, like stuff is just coming back to you. Blessings are coming back to you and the victory of God is everywhere in your life. Won't you help me appreciate God for your leaders? Um, uh, this tremendous man and woman of God. Get up and make some loud noise. For Pastor Gary and, um, and Myra Bellinger. Tremendous leaders and um, pioneers. Something that we'll talk about uh, throughout the course of uh, this meeting is that pioneering anointing. Understanding what it takes to be a pioneer of ministry. And to drive God's will, plans, and purposes into some place where it hasn't been before. Um, that's a powerful place and a powerful piece. Apostle and Mother Suber, we've already just given accolades to everybody. But I'm so grateful tonight to have my wife. Won't you stand up and just let them see you? I'm so grateful to have Dr. Carroll with me. And um, I was telling... Um, uh, Pastor Gary back in the office that we haven't been together uh, for, has it been a month? Over a month now. Um, uh, because uh, last month we welcomed our fifth grandchild into the world. Yeah, little Ashton. And, um, and uh, my, grand, uh, my daughter and her family are up in Milwaukee. And so uh, we went up for the birth of the baby and then Carol just stayed there. And uh, has been staying there and uh, uh, nurturing and doing what she does. She's, she's anointed to bring people to growth. Amen. She has this grace upon her life that just, just nurtures. And when we first, um, when we first got married, uh, I was still on the evangelistic field. And I was um, doing a lot of traveling. And uh, so I said to her, I said, does it, does it bother you that you're not able to travel with me? And she said to me, my first calling upon my life is to these children as their mother and to you as, um, uh, as my husband. And she has never changed from that. She's been a nurturer and God has used her um, to, uh, to minister in many, many ways. So when she said she wanted to stay and, uh, and be there with the grandchildren, I was feeling some type of way, but uh, I got over it. And, uh, and so she's been there. Uh, I was headed to Chicago a couple of weeks ago, and we had some interference, so I wasn't able to make that trip. So that meant that I was not able to see her. And uh, so when I said to her, I said, you ought to come to Charlotte. She said, okay. That, that meant that she was missing me more than the baby. <laughs> yeah, that, that meant that she was missing me, and she was able to... Um, 
able to leave little Ashton. So I'm grateful that she's here tonight. And um, just like uh, Apostle Suber uh, could talk all day about me, I could talk all day about him. I don't know a finer couple on the planet than Apostle and Mother Suber. And maybe sometime over the course of these days, we'll tell you about how we met and ran into each other and then bumped into prophecy. And uh, the rest is history. How many of you are ready for what God is getting ready to do? Hmm? Yeah, really? I mean, really, are you ready for what God is getting ready to do? And do you realize that um, everything that has taken place in your life up until this point has prepared you for this shift? It's prepared you for what's coming and uh, what the plans of the Lord are. So uh, I'm going to just share the word of the Lord tonight and uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. We'll come together on Saturday and we'll have some inquiry and some times of, um, of really prayer. Uh, but my heart tonight is that we would receive an impartation in this place. That the presence of God would just fall and confirm everything that you hear inside of your heart by, um, uh, by his divine design. Father, thank you. You're amazing and majestic and awesome. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Heaven and earth pass away, but your word will stand forever tonight. We desire to hear from you. We have intimately through our worship and our praise, through our prayer, we have climbed upon the seat of the throne and set ourselves in your lap with our ears to your voice that we might hear every word that proceedeth out of your mouth. Give us the reign of the supernatural and let us feel the power of God manifested in us like nothing we've ever felt before. Confirm everything that needs to be confirmed and answer questions before they're asked and bring solutions before problems present themselves. We know our God and they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The exploits are before us now and your will we shall do. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. First Corinthians, uh, chapter number three and verse number 10. Let's just honor Ezra tonight and stand on our feet and read the word of the Lord in concert together. It is, um, uh, it is uh, powerful that we always know that we are hearing the voice of God and not just reading the writ of God's word. So one verse to begin tonight, verse number 10, if you have it, say amen. Mm -hmm. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, 1 Corinthians 3.10, amen? According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Mm-hmm. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. Everybody say amen. amen. I want to talk to you tonight about the bridge building anointing. The bridge building anointing. Anointing for you. Take your seats. Tell three people. It's time to build a bridge. It's time to build a bridge. Time to build a bridge. Amen. You can have your seats. I just um. Uh, there are so many things that make my heart glad, and um, I'm gonna go off. I'm I'm gonna go off. Uh, I'm gonna go off script for just a minute. Uh, and and uh, there's so many things that make my heart glad. And, and one of them is to be in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina area and come to church and see somebody with a Green Bay Packer jacket on. 
Stand up and let the Lord see how God, let the saints see how God's blessing is upon your life and how you are in the will of God. I thank God. Amen. Thank you, man. That, that just blessed me. I, I am a Green Bay Packer fan. And as we say in Wisconsin, green and gold till I'm dead and cold, baby. And uh, I'm glad to find a witness in the house. Give the Lord a hand and praise for that, Jess. Yeah, that made me feel right at home. You can have your seat now. Yeah, it made me feel right at home. Um, let's deep dive into this uh, uh, tonight and, and hopefully uh, be able to uh, unearth some things that are so necessary about us understanding the apostolic move of God and what God has called us to. Um, the most prevalent apostolic function that's taking place right now. And you have to understand that it takes place at different times in different seasons. You with me? The most prevalent apostolic function that's uh, um, uh, taking place in the body of Christ right now is uh, we are in a season of the building dimension of the apostolic. It's a time for building. And, um, and as many have, uh, have understood, uh, we walk through these particular seasons and sometimes it's a season where we just tarry in the place where we are until God says it's time to build again. And once we hear God saying it's time to build again, we move out of maintenance mode. And now we begin to recognize that resources are coming and everything that we need in order for us to build and develop according to God's plan and purpose. Some people are building buildings and some people are building houses and some people are building people. Um, uh, the, the, the building um, is, is the building of systems. And mechanisms in order to get us from where we are to where God wants us to be. Everybody's building something. You're building something. Something's building. Um, one of the things that I got a revelation on before coming here is that there are a few people that are building bridges. If you understand what we're talking about tonight when we... Uh, place emphasis on the apostolic, you, you will understand that the acts of the apostles is a bridge. You live in the New Testament in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Most people, especially fundamentalists, like to jump from the Gospels to the epistles. And then live in Revelation. But there's very little emphasis placed on the bridge that connects the Gospels and the Epistles. That bridge is called the Acts of the Apostles. It is not the Acts of Christ. It is not the Acts of the Church. It is the acts of a particular company of men who by the divine design of God received promotion of the supernatural kind. They started out as students and turned into teachers. They went from being disciples to being apostles. Nobody knows when the shift happened. All they know is that the master that called them disciples changed their title and called them apostles. And at the time that the Christ changed their title, everything about them changed supernaturally. You don't have to have a whole lot of lessons. You don't have to have a whole lot of teachers. You don't have to have to go through a whole lot of workshops. What you need is for God to call you something different today than he called you yesterday. When he changes your title, everything in your world changes. The universe lines up with what God called you. It doesn't even matter with what you called yourself. When God calls you something different, everything changed. I can imagine just by the just by the hint of my own imagination what it must have felt like the day that God stopped calling them disciples and started calling them apostles. And they woke up the next morning and said something's different on me. 
I feel a fire on me that I didn't have before. I got a word in me that I didn't have before. All because he called you something different. I want you to get ready for a different calling. A different calling is coming up on your life as you begin to touch this realm of God. You're going to see the manifestation of God begin to show up in your life. I'm even speaking prophetically now that new callings and fresh anointings are going to fall in and upon your life. Your assignment is going to change as you begin to experience the reality of the power of God. First Corinthians chapter three is an interesting chapter uh, because it starts out with the apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth and having some concern interesting that we, we call it we call it the dilemma of Corinthian carnality Because he begins to talk to them about being carnal. He opens up by saying, I want to be able to give you meat, strong meat. But I can only give you milk because of your level of maturity. He he, he says you just have not grown correctly. Most of us need to need to really examine not just that we're growing, but how we grow. The, the need to be able to grow in community and grow in unity and grow together, one with the other, is so necessary. And, and if you have uh, the eye to see, you will recognize when somebody is growing and they're growing differently. You can grow and grow different from what others are growing. God intends for us to grow together. And so he works things in the community for everybody to be able to recognize the together growth or the oneness growth, the unity growth that is a part of the apostolic reality. He, he, he says that he says that one of the things or three of the things he cites um, that have kept you from that place of maturity. And I love this because. Um, What it does is it really begins to put emphasis on what it takes for us to be a real apostolic church. Are you with me? He he says that he he doesn't say um, that you haven't gained maturity because you're a fornicator. Doesn't say you haven't gained the maturity you need because you're homosexual. He doesn't say anything about you uh, not being mature because uh, you are an adulterer. He doesn't name any of the sins of the flesh. He understands that the maturity for you to be able to be an apostolic builder are not the sins of the flesh, but the condition of the heart. He says you have not matured because of envy. You have not matured because of strife. You have not matured because there are divisions among you. And these are the things that have kept you from being able to accomplish the strong meat that you need to accomplish the will of God. And then he closes before we get to verse number 10 by saying to them, we are laborers together with God yeah. say it with God I think it's the most pow- powerful words because um, uh, you got to realize there's some things you can't get without God some things you just can't do without God you've got to invite him into everything that you're doing everything that you're saying everything that you're everything that you're endeavoring and and then he says um, um, you are his workmanship <laughs> why are you looking at everything else that God is building God is really building you we are what God is building You may not realize that it might look good, um, but internally, uh, God is building the city of God. 
uh, uh, we we put we we put the 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 chairs in the sanctuary and the carpet on the floor and built the stage but guess what god is building the city the building requires a particular level of sacrifice it requires that we come into reality apostolic reality it's okay if i just talk to you like this tonight um When I'm talking about the apostolic and, um, and I'm going around the country and literally around the world and I'm seeing individuals that um, are saying that they are apostolic and I'm recognizing that there is this pseudo idea of what the apostolic is. It does not bring the reality of the apostolic into what God has really called us to. There's a scripture that talks about people uh, that have what the Bible calls a form of godliness. Hmm? But they are denying the power thereof. So, so when you begin to examine the acts of the apostles, you recognize that they are a people of power. So, so when we start talking about the understanding of uh, apostolic, apostolic reality um, uh, the there are some assumptions that should already be uh, in the midst of us foundations of understanding and number one number one is that you can't even begin to understand the reality of the apostolic if you're not saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost Huh? Don't, don't even try to make people understand the apostolic if they don't have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has to dwell in a holy life. Number two, number two, it is you must have some acquaintance with the supernatural. Everything about the acts of the apostles is supernatural. Everything that went on is because God got in it and changed everything that was taking place. He changed the economy in the apostolic church. He broke the bondage of the spirit of uh, Phariseeism and Sadduceeism. He broke through all of the traditions of men and he brought a birthing of something new and something powerful in the midst of the people of God. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it occurred by the supernatural power of the living God if you've never had a miracle you won't understand the apostolic if your body's never been healed when it was sick you won't understand the apostolic if you've never had God intervene in something in your life that everything and everybody else had failed at you will not understand the apostolic touch your neighbor tell your neighbor it's supernatural it's supernatural you can't understand it with the natural mind you have to give it to your spirit and let the spirit define it for you. People are messed up right now in the body of Christ because they think the apostolic is a title. They think it's about a promotion. They think it's about somebody doing something that others are, others are messed up because they think it has to do with doctrine. They got doilies on their head and all kind of things that have to do with their dress. And others think it has to do with baptism. It doesn't have anything to do with those things. And yet it has everything to do with those things because it is the pathway to the supernatural manifestation of God that's going to bring us back to signs and wonders and miracles in the last day of the church. It's going to be a revisitation of a reformation revival that will break us out of this mediocre, lukewarm place that we've been and usher us back to the presence of God. Where the manifestation of what God has called us to begins to work. You have to be open-minded. Because the apostolic will break tradition. You must be open minded because the apostolic will give you revelation of the new way of God and then command that you walk in that revelation. Am I doing all right? You, you have to understand that, that although there are those of us that know the word of God, many of us don't know the way of God. 
You can know God's word, but you don't know his way. And the only way to know his way out of his word is to recognize his authorization for you to act. You got to be authorized to operate in the apostolic. You can't just get up in the morning and say I'm an apostle and put a sign out and say I'm an apostolic church. If you haven't walked through what's necessary for you to get authorization from heaven, no man can authorize you to operate in this level of God's anointing. You must receive authorization from another realm, authorization from a higher seat. It's got to be God that says I've authorized you to walk in this area of your calling the 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 thing that has been the biggest hindrance and and you'll have to understand this um in in a very very abstract way um i say it's the biggest hindrance to the apostolic move of god that god has called for these last days and that is um the misinterpretation of terms and terminologies right now um uh, the the enemy The enemy will mess up a word, stick it in your mind, and allow you to judge everything connected to that word by that one thing that the enemy has placed in your mind to fool you. I can't understand how we live in that way because um, in in the dictionary, there's more than one definition for a word. So how in the world do we settle to receive a word and then associate it with something and never think that there can be something else to it? I wish you touched somebody and just tell them it's something else to it. It's something else to it. Whatever you thought about it, whatever you believed about it, there's something else to it. There's been denominational distortion. Um, and, and denominational distortion shows up uh, when people make a denominational God out of something that God has called divine. So they've made a denomination out of the apostolic. And the apostolic was never intended to be denominational. It was intended to be so divine that it broke the power of denomination and brought you into the spirit of liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's not a word that brings bondage. It's a word that breaks you out of whatever has kept you bound and show you how to live a liberated life. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Are you hearing me? This has nothing to do with denomination. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. And, and, uh, and, and in, in, anyway, when you receive doctrine and you don't receive update, you become obsolete in the doctrine that you initiated. We're living in a time now when we're not able to get people free because you're living in past truth. You're living in past doctrine. You're living in a word that somebody spoke that you revered. And so you set them up on a pedestal and never begin to seek God about Lord. Is there a word from the Lord today? Give us this day our daily bread. I don't want yesterday's bread. I don't want yesterday's word. I need what God is saying to me right now. I don't care what bishop said it, what apostle said it, what pope said it. You got to hear what God is saying now. Truth is absolute. Truth will always make you free. But the degrees of freedom depend on whether the truth is relevant. There is past truth, present truth, and future truth. You've got to let past truth go. Walk in that present truth so that you can see the future truth. You can't see the future from the past. Did you hear what I said? You can't see the future from the past. The future only shows up in the now. It doesn't live in the then. If you live in the then, you have to get to the now before you can see the future. It's the power that comes in the word of God when the power of the apostolic and the prophetic come together. Number two, um, here's the second thing. Here's the second thing that has been a hindrance to us. Um, 
Let let me just stay there for a second. The thing I want you to do right now is to just flush your mind. Everything that you thought the apostolic was, release it from your mind. And set your mind to begin to hear God say something new. That God is going to reveal something different. That God is going to show something else. What's really done damage to the apostolic are counterfeits. The authenticity of the apostolic has been threatened because there are so many individuals that are counterfeit apostles. There are individuals who have been deceived in their own selves. There, there, are, there, are, there are conspiracies. Preach Rick Daniels, thank you. That there are conspiracies set against the apostolic move of God. People haven't even realized that the enemy has set you in a place of confused doctrine. And so there are those that don't believe that there are apostles anymore. That don't believe that there is anything apostolic. That don't believe that the church can be anything except seeker friendly. You are not a seeker friendly church. You're an apostolic church. You're built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. You'll never be a Joel Osteen. You are an apostle Paul like ministry. We come out of holiness and into apostolic reality. We ain't never had to give nobody some donuts and coffee in order to get them to church. We believe the power of God meets you here. This is the foolishness that we've seen in the body of Christ in this hour until we have to make the house of God a place of entertainment in order for people to come in and experience the glory of the Lord. We never came to be entertained. We came to walk in to the presence of God in his presence, his fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's why I'm apostolic because I don't play with seeker-friendly folk. How long you going to stay seeker? How long you going to be seeking? Seek and ye shall. When will you find? You should have found it by now and it should have stabilized you and grew you and manifested you in what God has called you to be. Renegade apostles conspiracies and counterfeits and renegades and we can't get people to even believe we, we, we're praying we're praying every day Lord give us the revelation so that we know how authentic apostles will present themselves to the world because there are so many counterfeits here and so many renegades renegades people that are not connected to anybody people that don't submit themselves to anything people that jump up and just say I'm this and I'm that and have the nerve to stand beside you and say I'm just as much of an apostle as you are apostasy at its greatest level I don't allow anybody to come stand beside me and tell me that you're just as much of an apostle as I am the devil is a liar and you are too you can't make that claim until you've been through what I've been through until you walked out what I had to walk out until you allowed the power of God to manifest in your life and I'm not going to stand in the same posture with you Until you've earned the right to be able to call yourself an apostle. Men of God in the acts of the apostles have their head cut off so that we could carry the title apostle. John was boiled in oil and still didn't die so that we could call ourselves an apostle. 
Paul and, and Silas were locked in jail so that we could call ourselves an apostle. These individuals went through hell just so that we would have the title in this day and take the authority to the body of Christ. And you ain't did nothing but got up in the morning, went to bed after your trial sermon and got up the next day talking about you're an apostle and you think that? No, the devil is a liar. Renegades have messed it up for us. They've messed it up for us until individuals don't even know the real thing. And, um, and look, Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 2. And um, I share this with you because we're going to release this technology in the city of God before we leave. Here's a major reason that this has run rampant. Because the church is absent of divine discernment. We're dealing with a church that has no discernment. And the technology that was released in the church at Ephesus does not live in the body of Christ today. Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 2 says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Watch this. And thou hast tried them which say. They are apostles and are not and has found them liars. Huh? There's a technology that Ephesus leaves in the body of Christ so that we are not fooled. So that our eyes are open. So that we recognize by the spirit of God down inside of us when somebody is false, when somebody's playing, when somebody's lying. And there's an anointing that quarantines what's taking place until they're not even able to speak their lie in the midst of us. We found you to be a liar. Huh? And, uh, and we're, living in the, we're living in the day of evidence. And everybody want to say, well, how did you know and what did you know? And we don't have anybody that really has the uh, boldness to say, God told me. God told me by his spirit. God told me it's not by might, nor is it by power. It's by it's my spirit, saith the Lord. I will stand in your face flat footed and look you in your eye and tell you God told me you're not an apostle. I'm not even sure if you're a pastor. Authorized. Are y'all still with me? It's the reality of the apostolic. The apostle Paul said, I judge everybody and nobody can judge me. He was speaking of, I, I, I call it apostolic arrogance. Because we've all made arrogance be something um, that is negative. But I need to tell you there's some positive arrogance. Because we've been called out and up. Did you hear what I said? We've been called out and up. And when God has called you out and lifted you up, you don't go back down to where people are on their level. You call them up to you. Tell them what they need to do to come up here. I'm not coming down there with you. That's where God brought me from. So I had a, um, I had a revelation. And... It hit me so strong. I was going over um, to Shazetta's house. Um, she's our executive administrator and our daughter, uh, her and her husband, and they live uh, not far from us. And uh, I try to keep my body fit. Um, so uh, at least two miles uh, every day, I try to ride my bike. And um, I get with the cyclers and so on and so forth and try to keep myself um, 
try to keep myself uh, so that God continued to use me. And uh, there are a lot of us that really don't put apostolic is going to call you to put emphasis on your body. Because when you start getting that calling, you start realizing a fresh anointing is on you. And then you start realizing that no matter how anointed you are, it takes your body to be healthy, to be able to perform God's plans and purposes. So we've got to keep our body fit. Anyway, uh, I'm on the bike and um, I'm going down the street. And there's a street that I hadn't gone down before, and it looked like it was a shortcut. And so I said, man, if I could go down here, I was trying to get there in a hurry. And uh, if there was a back road or something like that, I could see the barrier. You ever see one of those places where they start to make a road and then they stopped? And so it's paved all the way up to a certain point, and then there are barriers there. Uh, well, that's what I, that's what I saw um, when I was riding. And, and so I said, it's going to take me more time if I go down there, and that's not a road. So, you know, should I do it, or should I just go the long way, um, the way that I've been going? But my curiosity got the best of me. And so I went ahead and rode my bike down a half a mile down the road, and uh, I got to where um, the pavement went. And I rode my bike up in uh, this place where the pavement was until I got to the barriers. And now I'm able to see that there is not only not a road there, but there's a lake. And I'm always wondering now on the other side of that, why um, there's not a shortcut to make it so much easier to get there. Immediately, I began to recognize that the Lord was speaking. And so I took the time and stood there for a few minutes and just allowed the presence of the Lord to saturate me where I was. And when I did that, I began to hear people in the lake. Souls that were crying out. Now, all this time, I'm in prayer about coming here. So, so I know that there's something relevant taking place. Um, <clears throat> I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, who are these people in the lake? Why are these people in the lake crying out? The Lord said to me, these are the people that have tried to take a shortcut to the apostolic. And they've drowned it in the water of baptism. I wish you could get this with me here. Are you hearing me? I stood there and I looked at them and I thought uh, in my mind's eye and I thought how many individuals I know right now that are drowning in a misunderstanding of what the apostolic is because they wanted a shortcut. Watch this where there is no bridge. Where there is no bridge bridge I got on my bike and left there and pedaled all the way around the long way around and when I got all the way around uh, Pastor Gary I began to see the other end of the lake and I'm recognizing now that if there had been a bridge this is where it would have come I said Lord what does this mean? And the Lord said, it's going to take some to go the long way around. But you can't build the bridge going to the apostolic. You have to bridge the bridge coming from the apostolic. Look here. We need bridge builders in the body of Christ right now that will rescue those that are drowning in their own foolishness. They've received the word of the Lord, but they have not allowed there to be a bridge to bring them to the place where they're not able to go because of shortcut. You can't take a shortcut to the supernatural. You can't take a shortcut to the Holy Ghost. You can't take a shortcut to divine healing. You must go all the way around. I'm a bridge builder. Get up real quick. Touch three people and tell them I'm a bridge builder. I'm a bridge builder. 
I'm going to help somebody get to this. I'm a bridge builder. I'm going to rescue somebody that's drowning. I'm a bridge builder. I am anointed to build bridges. I can see where you need to go. I've got an anointing to show you how to get there. I don't want anybody else to drown trying to get somewhere the wrong way. Lift your hand and say, I'm a bridge builder. I'm a bridge builder. Charlotte needs a bridge. This entire area needs the bridge of God. I got to get finished here. So, 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 um, um, somebody just shout, it's time to build again. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the thing that I love about this, I was raised in holiness. My wife, both of us raised in holiness. Don't, don't know anything else. Um, and, and so when we started being drawn toward the apostolic, we understood that the apostolic, watch this, some of you are going to you're gonna get mad with me about this statement, but you're going to see what I'm talking about later on. The apostolic move of God today is holier than holiness. It's holier than the holiness that we've known. It's holiness, holier than what we've been taught. It is so sacred that it brings you into a personal intimacy with God that has nothing to do with who else you're connected to. It's more personal than the holiness that we've known. We've known it as a doctrine. We've known it as a denomination. We've known it as a group of people. We've known it as our heritage and our lineage. We've known it as our genealogy. But now we're going to know him for ourselves. You're going to know the holiness of God that exists on the throne of your heart as he sits on the holies of holies. Emphasis on our condition of the heart. Go to Acts uh, chapter 2 and verse number 42 and 43. And, um, and uh, we're going to give you a few scriptures and we're going to stop for tonight. How many of you are receiving something for what I'm saying tonight? You understand how powerful this thing is? Take some time and just go through the Acts of the Apostles. If you've read it before, go back and read it again. Read it in the light of this understanding. And you're going to see the assignment that God has set upon you now. You're going to see the things that are going to change as miracles begin to manifest. I'm talking about bona fide miracles begin to manifest in the midst of you. You're going to see what it takes to draw people because now you're going to see the manifestation of the power of God that brings the law of attraction activated so that people are not able to resist you. We, 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 we've, we've allowed ourselves to drift and, uh, and, and in that drifting, um, you know, we've done everything that we've had church growth seminars and, and, and we passed out tracts and we've gone door to door like Jehovah Witnesses. And, you know, we did all of these things. But I'm old enough to remember the day when people would come in the church that we'd never seen before. And give testimony and say I was driving down the street and my car turned around by itself and came back here to the house of God. I'm old enough to remember when people would wander in off the street that spoke a different language and would hear us speaking in tongues and would hear the word of the Lord because of the power of God in the midst of us. It's a return to the future. We're going forward and not backwards. And greater works than shall we do. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. You are not apostolic if you don't know the doctrine. The teaching of the apostles outweighs any other teaching in the body of Christ. Do you hear me? 
Because when we get to the when we get to the apostolic place, man, I'm feeling excited right here. When we get to the apostolic place, it's not about being born again. It's about growing into maturity. As the Christ did, he grew in stature and in spirit. It's about growth. Jesus didn't make converts. He made disciples. Everybody around here want to be an evangelical church. We're not evangelists. We're apostles. We're not here to get you saved. We're here to get you grown. The apostolic is the anointing of the first Adam. It's not the anointing of the second Adam. The first Adam did not come here as a baby. He came into the world as a grown man. Are you hearing me? Let people get saved somewhere else. Let them come over here when they're ready to grow. Did you hear me? Don't nobody care where they got saved and where they got baptized at. If they were really serious when they get ready to grow, they're going to know that that same milk that they received when they got saved is not going to grow them into a place of maturity. And they're going to come where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. There's meat over here. Meat. There's meat over here. God has prepared people in somebody else's house in order to send them here that they might bring their gifts to you and you might get their, give your growth to them. That's the apostolic reality. That's the power of what takes place inside of us. So, so you must know the doctrine. Number two, number two, you must love fellowship. Touch your neighbor and say, I love fellowship. Come on. Tell your neighbor, I love fellowship. No, no, apostolic people don't act funny. You can't shout with me and not eat with me. Are you hearing me? No, no, no. You can't have your clique. You can't have your clan. You can't. That's not apostolic. When you start acting like that, we understand that you have backslid to the lesser light. If you go operate in the greater light, you got to love me just like you love him. Fellowship. Come to church with me, but you can't hang out with me. Do you realize that the apostles were closer to each other than they were to their own family? They did everything together. Fellowship. Why can't you fellowship? You're staying away from us because you're hiding? We knew you had issues when you came. We already know you're crazy. We discern your foolishness the very first day you came in here. You can't hide nothing from us. Come on, dwell among us. Some of your deliverance is not at the altar. Some of your deliverance is at the table. Some of your deliverance is in the fellowship. Some of your deliverance is in the place where we gather outside of the temple. Lift your hands and shout fellowship. You got to love fellowship. You got to love fellowship. Miracles happen when you fellowship. Super Apostle Super can tell you we've seen more manifestations of God at the restaurant. Our scene have been with us times when we've been in the restaurant after church and the Holy Ghost fall in the Denny's. We tear the Denny's up with a miracle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fellowship is not because a supernatural anointing was in Denny's. It's because where two or three are gathered together in my name there, I'll be in the midst of you. Fellowship. They continued steadfastly in the breaking of bread. 
Everybody apostolic ought to be able to cook. <laughs> Cooking anointing. Cooking anointing falls on you. Are you hearing me? Yeah, that cooking anointing falls on you. And then you begin to understand how much food has to do with community. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Food is connected to community. And I'm, I'm offended when you can shout with me, but you won't eat with me. hotels and restaurants and 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 you can't invite me to your house what kind of foolishness is that we don't live that way apostolic people go from house to house breaking bread together sometimes we have prayer in each other's house we got don't nobody care how nasty your house is you're still growing It's gonna grow. <laughs> You're still growing. Let me tell you something. If you're not good at housekeeping, and we've already been there, we know what to prepare for when we come. But when you laid in that bed, in that nasty bedroom, and you need a miracle from God. It don't make no difference how nasty the bedroom is. You want somebody to come in there that has the anointing of God, sling some oil, call the name of Jesus, and get you up out of that sick bed where you are. Stop majoring in the minors. Break bread together. Talk, share, interact, experience the oneness, feel the connection. Tell you what else you do. You stop the devil in his tracks um, from your good being evil spoken of. Apostle Super telling you that I stay in his in his house and he and mother made a room for me way back in Charleston I don't know any house that they've been in that I didn't claim my room now sometime I let Orville and Arsena sleep in it <laughs> whenever they come by <laughs> but they know it's my room let me tell you where that came from. It came from the reputation of men and women of God That's right. yes. being so tainted That's right. yeah. because of their philandering uh -huh. in and out of hotels and in and out of restaurants and all of that kind of foolishness. You don't never have to worry about who come into my room at the hotel. Because they got to come through Suba's door in order to get to me. We don't believe in no whoring. Y'all ain't studying me here. We don't believe in no whoremongering. We don't believe in living beneath what God has called us to. And that's why almost everywhere I go, I stay with the saints. I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. Are y'all hearing me? I got a witness. You're talking about you came by trying to whore around with me. No, no. Mother Suba's a witness. Amen. Amen. And then something's wrong when people want to take. I'm just talking to y'all. Some of y'all preachers coming up now. Something wrong when people want to take counsel with you, but they don't want to meet you at the house. I. I done took over their house and had meetings at their house. Come see me at the house. Come, are you hearing what I'm saying? No, no. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know why I went that way. Maybe, maybe it helped somebody. Maybe it helped somebody. It's apostolic. It's apostolic. We share 
the roof that God has given us to cover those who God has sent. Amen. And it blesses your house. It blesses your house and everything that you have to do. All right. The last thing he says here is prayer. Prayer. Apostolic people pray. You have never found anybody that has a prayer life like apostolic people. Apostolic people, watch this, they pray when they're not praying. Anybody understand what a prayer life is? Uh, That means prayer is your life. Even when you're not praying, you're praying. You pray unintentionally. The prayer just comes on you. The prayer shows up inside of you. That's why Paul said pray without ceasing. There's this ability to be able to pray and never stop. Prayers. When they got this right, say it, doctrine, Doctrine. fellowship, Fellowship. breaking the bread, bread. prayer, Prayer. fear came upon every soul. Uh And many wonders and signs were done through Uh the apostles. Yes? Yes? Yes. By the apostles in the King James. New King James says it was done through the apostles. That's when God works through you. Signs, wonders, and miracles. You ought to say it like lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. It ought to be the song. It's the supernatural. I told Miranda, I was with Miranda a couple of, couple of months ago, and she's singing the open heaven song. And I told her, it's the anthem of the apostolic supernatural community now. We are up under an open heaven. Everything that we desire God is able to do if we would just let go and let God. I'm finishing. I'm finishing with Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 19 through 21. Mm. Glory to God. I'm a bridge builder. I'm a touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm a bridge builder. Lord, have mercy. I I, I need you to not only uh, receive the reality of the apostolic, but I need you to also uh, begin to prepare other people to have an apostolic experience. We've got to be able to build the bridges now so that those that are drowning can find themselves in the way of God. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers or there is no more strangeness among us. You're no longer foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And of the household of God. Let me tell you how you got here. You are built upon the foundation. Y'all tired of me? I ain't tired yet. You're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. The idea here. Now is to think about the difference um, between the church and the kingdom. We have spent most of our time understanding the church and realizing even to the point of defending that the church is on the foundation of Jesus Christ. But when the idea begins to shift and there begins to be now as uh, the apostle writes to the church at Ephesus, Ephesus, a very strong reality that the church is not going to be able to accommodate what God is getting ready to do in the world. Therefore, I must evolve the church into what we call the kingdom of God. 
the church begins to be your door or your access way. But you have to keep marching until you enter into the kingdom. Most people are not able to get there because the Bible teaches us that through much tribulation shall we enter the kingdom of God. Everybody backs up at the tribulation, but God's raising up a people that are going to keep on walking. No matter what you're dealing with and no matter what you're going through, I'm feeling a press on the inside because I can see the kingdom. I've been satisfied in church, but thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lift your hands and say, I see the kingdom. I see the kingdom. The kingdom of God will not fit on the foundation of the church. The kingdom of God has to be on a bigger foundation, a firmer foundation. And so God looks around from heaven and says, what kind of foundation shall I lay? He says, I'll show you the governance that's locked into fivefold ministry. Let's climb up the ladder in Ephesians and go all all the way to the top when you get to the top you see apostolic oneness one Lord one faith and one baptism I hear the Lord say I believe I'll build the kingdom on the foundation of the apostles and prophets I'll take Jesus Christ from being the foundation and set him in the wall and make him the cornerstone and then I'll lay another foundation that's called A and P. It is the apostles and the prophets. Apostles give you authority. Prophets tell you what to do with it. The prophets say it's coming. The apostles say it is here. It's the partnership of the apostles and the prophets that drive you into the place of victory. Lift your hand and say yes. No more foolishness because the entire body is fitly joined together. We're getting rid of the schism because we're fitly joined together. We're getting rid of the anger because we're fitly joined together. We're getting rid of the strife because we're fitly joined together. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor we fit. We fit. We fit. We fit. We're building a bridge and we fit together one with the other. I don't want any more relationship with people that I don't fit. I want to be with somebody who connects with me. Why you want to do that, Daniels? Because I'm apostolic. I've come across the bridge. I understand what this thing is all about. I'm going to walk in the supernatural. I'm going to abide in the power. I'm going to live in the cloud. I'm going to manifest the fire. I'm going to work out my own soul salvation with fear and trembling. I am a bridge builder. I have the anointing. I, I can't tell you to go where I haven't been myself. I came across the bridge and now you can come across the bridge. I've got the anointing. So say yes. So say yes. So say yes. I've got the anointing. I'm anointed for this. I've got to go through some stuff, but I'm anointed for it. I might have to hurt, but I'm anointed for it. Don't be trying to help me out. I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed for it. I'm anointed for it. The transition is going to have some challenges. But you have to tell somebody I'm anointed for this. <laughs> I came across the bridge. 
you're going to have some people feeling pity for you and trying to talk you out of going through. But you have to tell them, leave me alone. I'm anointed for this. Don't let nobody mess with your process. When they mess with your process, they mess with your perfection. And God is bringing you to perfection. Lift your hands again. Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed for this. Come on, stand everybody. Lift your hands. I declare an anointing on you. The entirety of the city of God. We release a fresh anointing upon every one of you from the very top of your head to the sole of your feet. We decree and declare right now by the power of Jesus name that you're going to walk in an anointing for everything that you need and everybody around you. That the power of God is going to manifest miracles, signs, wonders. You are anointed. for this next move of God. I don't know what God is going to do next, but I'm anointed for it. I don't know who's he going to send in here, but I'm anointed for them. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have the anointing. And because of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. Say it, say it. I am anointed. Say it again. I am anointed. Shout it loud. I am anointed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take a few minutes and just clap your hands and just tarry with me for a minute. Oh, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I see the challenge, but I'm anointed. I see the difficulty, but I'm anointed. I might be broke, but I'm anointed. I'm still wealthy, even when I'm broke. I am anointed. Increase is my portion. Increase is my portion. Overflow is my portion. I am anointed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your anointing. Yeah. Thank you for activation. Thank you that right now heaven is recognizing the anointing that rests upon the city of God right here in Concord, North Carolina. The heavens are open and the power of God is flowing in the midst of us like nothing ever before. We are under an open heaven. Yay. I'm trying to stop here. Let the portals be open. Let the portals be open. Let the angels come. Send the angels of God from the north and the south, from the east and the west. Let the ministering angels come in the midst of us now. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stay here just about 30 more seconds. Somebody is getting the healing in your body. Let the wave of healing go through here now. I feel the wave of God's anointing. Anointed to heal. Anointed to deliver. Anointed to set free. I feel the wave. Hey. God's anointing. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. And we give you the honor now. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Seven people. Get out of your seat and hug seven people and tell your brother or your sister, I'm anointed for you. I'm anointed for you. I'm anointed for you. You're not in this thing by yourself. I'm anointed for you. That's what the apostolic does. It anoints me for somebody else. I'm anointed for you. Don't ever worry about burdening me. I'm anointed for you. You can talk to me. You can share with me. You can be in fellowship with me. I'm anointed. I'm anointed for you. Oh. I'm anointed for you. I'm anointed for you. I'm anointed for you. So whatever is your problem, I'm anointed for you. So whatever you're going through right now, I'm anointed for you. For whatever you've been dealing with, I'm anointed for you. Hey, 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 When you get that seventh person, I want you to start giving God praise right where you're standing. Start giving him glory right where you're standing. Start giving him praise right where you are standing. That which the devil meant for evil, God turns it around and makes it good. No division, no schism among us. We're apostolic and I'm anointed. together and give him the praise just a few more minutes tonight let's give him the glory that he's worthy of hey i know some of you already got it but before this weekend is up, I want you to release yourself in an apostolic praise. You know the difference in an apostolic praise? Apostolic praise is not a pretty praise. Apostolic people praise until their wig come off. They praise till their teeth come out. They praise, I done seen them praise till their dress fall down off of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's like you don't care what nobody says or what nobody does. You're going to give him the greatest praise that you've got. Clap your hands and give him glory.
I just felt like the Lord wants you to give him one last praise for your family. Who's on the other side of that bridge that you're building? What family members are getting ready to come across that bridge? Your sons, your daughters, your mothers, your fathers, your nephew, your cousin, coming across that bridge. Give him that praise for your family as your family members come across the bridge. Come on through. Come on through. Come on through. Come on through. We got to go. We got to go. My goodness. Listen, let's give God an offering. Give the Lord a hand praise for the opportunity to give up under this cloud. For the opportunity to give up under this cloud. Now we want you to set your hearts towards some strong places of giving this week. But tonight, this is your first opportunity to sow into the release of the apostolic anointing in the city of God. It's your first opportunity to sow in this. And we want you to get your best gift. Your best gift tonight. Ah, and then, and then we're going to plan to give greater um, as we go throughout the weekend. But tonight, let's get your greatest seed and just sow it tonight in this place. I'm telling you, I feel like now it's one thing about this church. Y'all got an anointing for dancing. I feel like taking off my shoes right now and just dancing in my bare feet. <laughs> 